Welcome to lecture 10 on computational geometry. I'm sorry that today my voice might be a bit off because I caught a mean cold, but I hope that we can still get through this one. Today's lecture is about motion planning. First I want to look what motion planning is and then we want to do something a bit more complicated. If you want to do some planning, then that means that you are in some current situation for example, you are a robot and you're standing in your room and there is some desired situation that might be that you want to eat some cake. To get to that situation, you have to do something. And what you have to do is you have to, to use an algorithm to get to your desired situation. And an algorithm is just a sequence of steps to reach it. So first you have to mix the dough, then you have to bake it, then you have to cut the cake and then you can you eat it. Now, similarly, if I am standing at some location and I want to get to a desired location, for example, I want to get to the cake that's standing on the table, then I again have to do some planning because I have to find a path to get there. And there might be some obstacles in the way, for example, my girlfriend who's reading a magazine. So I have to find a path that avoids all these obstacles. And this is the problem we want to look at today. First, assume that our robot is just a single point. This is the very basic version. So we have some start position in the plane, we have some goal position in the plane, and we want to walk from the start to the goal position, but we also have some obstacles. Now, how would you do this? The way I want to present you how to do this is, if we don't even know what the start and the goal point is in the beginning, then we can do some pre-processing and then for two points we can query where is a path to between them. And for that we use something that we already know of, which is the trapezoidal map of the obstacle edges that we used for querying the point location in a map. Of course we don't need those edges that are inside the obstacle, so we can remove the vertical extensions that lie inside those. And now we have some trapezoids of the free map and we can add vertices. We add one vertex for every trapezoid and one vertex for every vertical extension. Now what I want to do is we connect them in such a way that every trapezoid is connected to the vertical extensions that bound it. And then we want to find a path in this graph. And to figure out which path we want to find, we locate where the starting point and where the end point are. So in which trapezoid does my starting point lie and in which trapezoid does my end point lie. It's this one. And now we simply look at the vertices that correspond to these trapezoids and we find a path between them in this graph. And to find a path from the start point to the goal point, we just have to connect it to the vertex that represents its trapezoid. And we know that we can do this because all these trapezoids here are convex points. That means that every point sees every other. So our goal point and our start point definitely see the vertex that we placed inside the trapezoid. How much time does this take? We know that we can create a trapezoidal map in order of n log n time. We can remove these vertical extensions clearly by just looking at each of them does it lie in this obstacle in order of n time. We place the vertices at the centers and trapezoids, that's one vertex per trapezoid, one per vertical extension, the complexity is linear, so this is again linear. And in the same time we can connect the neighboring vertices by line segments. Now to locate the start and end point, we have to do a query in the trapezoidal map. And for that we know we can do it in order of log n time. And to find any path in this graph, we can for example use the breadth first search or depth first search, whatever we want to use. That we can do in order number of the vertices plus the edges. This is a planar graph with order of n vertices, so this takes order of n time. And then finding this segment, that's very quick, that we can do in constant time. So the total time we take here is order of n log n. But we can also split it in pre-processing and querying. Everything we do here, that we only have to do once in the very beginning. 
and then for every start and end point we only have to do the bottom part. So we have order of n log n preprocessing time and order of n querying time. This gives us our very first result. We can preprocess a set of polygon lobstackers with a total number of n edges in order of n log n expected time, such that if we have given a start and go position, then we can find a collision free path for the point robot in order of n time if it exists. And this sounds a bit long that we need order of n time querying, even if we had used some preprocessing, but actually we cannot really do better because even the path itself can have length order of n. For example, here this is almost one quarter of the edges, but it could be just one long path around two around one obstacle that has many points, and then you have to walk along half of the edges. So you definitely have order of n length in the path. So this is the best we can do. And in the next part we want to generalize this to more realistic robots that are polygonal and not a single point.